everybody. This is an updated video um, from peripheral vascular disease to peripheral arterial disease. Both of these conditions are very, very, very similar. Peripheral If it's peripheral arterial disease, they have peripheral vascular disease. Um, it's just the nomenclature of how they want to describe the condition. But I wanted to make a video that was specifically peripheral arterial disease, even though peripheral vascular disease is kind of how it's talked about sometimes. A lot of times the board's going to show it specifically like this. So the video on peripheral vascular disease is still out there. The podcast on peripheral vascular disease is still out there. This is just an updated version to really hone in on the arterial side of things. Both conditions are correct. Both information is very similar. I've just added a couple more things to this PowerPoint to make it specific to peripheral arterial disease. So with that being said, let's get into it and let's talk about it. A lot of this is going to be very, very familiar, um, so probably won't be too long of an episode. Uh, so as we know, this is going to affect the arteries and it's because of a buildup of atherosclerotic lesions, which is basically plaque in the artery. So essentially the plaque starts building up. As you can see in this photo here, if you're seeing this in video format, um, you can see that the plaque has built up and that's narrowed the artery. So the more the artery narrows, the less blood flow getting through, which is why you will see necrosis at end stage peripheral arterial disease and ulcer formation all of that crazy stuff. So usually due to a high lipid diet, so somebody who has a lot of eating a lot of fatty foods is going to develop all this plaque in their arteries, which is going to cause lots of problems. So again, arteries, it's going to affect the arteries. Um, and again, as I said before, sometimes referred to as peripheral vascular disease. It's the same thing we got bad things going on in the arteries. Um, so essentially the primary reason why you're developing peripheral arterial disease is due to athro or arteriosclerosis, which is the buildup of fatty plaque in the arteries. Um, other factors that can contribute to the buildup of plaque in the arteries or cause um, problems with the arteries being able to have smooth blood flow would be autoimmune diseases or um, diabetes mellitus. So that tends to be a very common one, especially type two diabetes. Smoking ruins everything. Smoking causes vasoconstriction, which will not allow as much blood flow through the, the artery, which therefore will decrease oxygen perforation to the tissue, which then can cause the tissue to die. So you can see how it goes down the spiral. Um, hyperlipidemia, so high levels of lipids in the blood. As we know, lipid is going to cause that fatty plaque buildup. So again, makes sense. Uh, inactivity and obesity. So again, usually due to diet. And then if you're not moving around a lot, um, you're not allowing the vessels to contract and like move and stuff like that. Um, it's causing lots of problems. So sedentary lifestyle is not going to be helpful if for somebody who's developing peripheral arterial disease. Um, hypertension causes all the cardiovascular problems under the sun. So uh, watch blood pressure um, because as the lumen, so the hole inside of the artery gets smaller and sm smaller, what happens is the blood flow gets faster and there's um, more pressure on the walls of the artery. So think of like when you're, um, I always use this example, you're spraying a hose or whatever. If you leave the hose uncovered, it's just a normal stream of water. If you put your thumb over the hose, you are decreasing the amount, the size of the opening. So therefore the water is going to shoot out faster and shoot out at a higher pressure. That's what's happening in the arteries as well due to that decrease in the radius. So pressure increases as radius size decreases. That's physics. That's hydrodynamics. We can get into that another day. I know I probably just traumatized like three people like oh, my physics class. Ah, so that's what's happening here. Um, injury and surgery. Obviously, if there's any sort of injury or compromise to the vessels, that's going to cause problems with them and not allow them to work properly. And then a past medical history um, or familiar. So um, any sort of family related uh, conditions that affect the arteries can have a genetic component or maybe you're genetically predisposed to having problems with the arteries. So the big thing of what it looks like is we will have this thing called intermittent claudication. So if you see intermittent claudication, automatically think peripheral arterial, peripheral vascular disease. That's what's going on. Like there is no other condition where you will experience this. Is always going to be compromise of the arteries. And so it's going to be pain. So remember how with um, arterial ulcers, if you elevate it, it becomes painful and everything like that because blood can't get across 
the um, occluded area. It's the same sort of thing. So this is brought on by exercise. So a patient could be walking for like five minutes and then all of a sudden they're feeling all this pain and cramping in their calves and it hurts a lot. And then when they sit down, it goes away. So that's the important thing. So symptoms are brought on by exercise or activity, and then they're relieved with rest. So um, it's going to be described as pain, not weakness or anything like that, like pain. They're like, ow, this hurts. Um, legs will feel tired and they'll start to get out with that prolonged exertion. So they'll feel tired and they'll feel painful. Um, this could also cause a patient to develop an arterial insufficiency ulcer. So if there's lack of blood flow to the area, um, the skin is going to start to ulcer. And so you will see um, all the symptoms of arterial insufficiency. Um, there's another video on that. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so that's what's going on with this one. Um, and then other symptoms you would see is the same. These are all the symptoms of a um, arterial insufficiency ulcer as well. So the loss of sensation or the numbness and tingling around the wound bed and distal to the area that is compromised. So distal to the lesion. Um, you'll also see loss of hair. It'll be pale. It'll be white. It'll be a, a lighter pink wound bed with smooth edges. That's what's going on there. Um, it'll usually be located on the lateral aspect or the dorsum of the foot. Um, so that's where you're seeing all of this stuff. So it'll be, it'll be cold and the circulation sucks. So you'll have slow healing similar to like with diabetes, how you have very slow healing wounds. Uh, pain will be, um, occurring, can occur at rest as well. Um, it gets worse with exercise, gets better with rest, but you can still have pain at rest. You will feel a very weak or absent pulse, depending on how severe the claudication is. So claudication essentially just means blockage. That's pretty much what it means. Um, so you'll have a absent or diminished or weak and thready pulses at like the dorsalis pedis, which would be distal to where all of this is happening. Again, this is mostly happening in the legs as well. Um, just the legs tend to be compromised by pretty much everything under the sun because they are the most... Um, lowest gravity is affecting them the most and then hair loss because hair needs oxygen to be able to grow because hair is alive and if there's no oxygen that won't be alive so they will have no hair and it'll be like shiny um pharmacological management is going to be key for this so seeing what's the problem is it that they need statins which are the anti-hyperlipidemic agents um do they need anticoagulants antiplatelets or thrombolytics depending on if there's a clot or the potential of a clot forming in the legs um that's what's going on uh, arterial clots are a lot less common than venous clots but they still can happen but again if we're thinking of a leg clot nine times out of ten it's going to be a venous clot there is the possibility of an arterial one most of the time with this one, it's going to be that fatty buildup. So they're going to be on an anti-hyperlipidemic agent, such as like Zocor or something like that. Um, PT interventions would be to improve walking tolerance in general. So like maybe you're doing intermittent walking, like a couple, like a rest break and then walk a little bit more, rest break, walk a little bit more. Um, the recumbent bike is going to be key as well. It's going to improve general cardiovascular endurance. Um, and it also allows them to rest if they need to, because they're already in a seated position. They don't have to worry about their legs giving out or falling. Um, you'll work on range of motion still with this patient, progressive resistive exercises. Um, you'll, the big thing is you'll want to improve the patient's functional independence as best they can, because they probably are limited by their endurance and by their symptoms of their intermittent claudication. This patient will be on a low cholesterol diet to avoid that atherosclerotic buildup. And then there will be um, wound care if there is an arterial wound present. Surgical interventions can include um, an angioplasty, uh, which is where they will create a new blood vessel. Um, they could bypass that area or they could stent it um, as well, just to open it up a little bit more and allow blood flow. So that's pretty much what's going on with this one. Um, keywords are going to be our intermittent claudication, pain when walking, which is relieved with rest or worse with prolonged activity. Atherosclerosis or arterial sclerosis is going to be the key one. Pain and cramping in the calves with exercise that is like hallmark sign, poor circulation or sensation, um, and cold extremities, as well as the presence of a potential arterial ulcer. So let's get into the sample question here, guys. All right, guys, here's our sample question. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient who has a large pale color wound on the lateral aspect of their lower leg. Which of the following exercises would be most difficult for this patient to perform? Number one, seated long arc quads. Number two, ambulating on a treadmill for 15 minutes without rest. Three, three minutes on, two minutes off recumbent bike. 
or four sit to stands. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, guys, so the answer is going to be ambulating on a treadmill for 15 minutes without rest. So again, this is going to be the most difficult exercise. Seated long or quad should not cause any difficulty for this patient. It's not really elevating it above the level of the heart to cause a lot of problems. Also, it's a quick movement, so it's only up there for like a second or two. Um, so that's not going to hurt it too much. Um, three minutes on, two minutes off recumbent bike is going to be the ideal intervention for this patient to give them adequate rest breaks, but also working on their cardiovascular endurance. Probably you'd do this for like, I don't know, 15 minutes minutes or so. Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, sit to stands is always going to be a nice functional strengthening movement, which is always going to be needed for these patients to make sure that they can maintain independence in the house um, or in their daily lives, whatever they're doing. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. Um, I know I kind of took a little bit of different approach to this, um, but I wanted to make sure that I redid this to specifically target peripheral arterial disease, make it a little bit different, and um, just reinforce some of the things that you guys have already heard. So I hope that this was helpful, guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.